Uh, today is Saturday, March 25th, and um, yesterday I got a lot done. A little recap, I said that I was going to uh, replace the riblet on the closeout right here. I got that done. Um, it's a little bit of work to drill out those um, blind rivets, but I learned a good trick uh, for that. <clears throat> it doesn't work all the time, but it works a lot. And that is to take, rather than try to drill out the hole directly, which is hard because they're steel, but take a really large bit, like a 3 8 inch bit, start it in the little, uh, the little hole in the center of the um, rivet, and turn very, very slowly, just enough pressure that the, the, the drill bit will cut. And what it will do is, after a few turns, it will completely take off the head of that thing without messing up the skin or the hole. And then usually you can just uh, use a standard um, punch and push the rest of the rivet through. So that worked really well. Uh, in terms of the RTV going at the ends of the stiffeners, um, I did a lot of reading up on Vans Air Force and I talked to some people as well. Um, it used to not even be a thing. It's okay without it. Um, it just helps tie those stiffeners in together and maybe keep uh, the trailing edge a little bit more sturdy. So um, one guy said that what he did was, because he had cracking in other places, was where he drilled stop holes. He used a really tiny hole to inject the RTV in there. So if that's something that I want to do later, that's always a possibility, but it's not necessary to do. If you forget it, you forget it. Nice to have. Uh, the other thing that I did was I rolled and riveted the leading edges. This was every bit as frustrating as um, advertised, but I think that it, it turned out pretty well. Um, so today I'm going to do the edge rolling on the rudder and the right elevator, get that done. I also, I said that I was going to um, thread these or screw these in completely, the counterweights and torque them. That's done. I'll do the same thing on the other two uh, control surfaces for the empennage. So that's where we're at. The shop's a mess right now um, from yesterday's work. I finished late, like 11.30. So I'll get cleaned up a little bit and uh, get into it. Stay tuned. Looks like at this point um, on the right elevator, I've already done the two outboard portions and you see me here switching from the wooden uh, rod to a piece of PVC and I think it's uh, maybe about an inch and a quarter outside diameter. As you move closer to the inboard portion of the elevators, the, um, the spar becomes wider and so it gets a little more difficult to roll with a, a narrower piece. So here I'll give it to you kind of real time. Uh, Gorilla tape um, for the win. Uh, it holds pretty tightly, but you might need a couple layers of it because that edge, um, even though it's been cleaned up, um, still wants to uh, bite into it. And with all the force you're putting on it, it it's going to want to uh, tear on you. So I've taken some PVC, drilled some holes uh, through either end, and then uh, you can use a screwdriver or whatever. I think that I've got like a, a hex head uh, driver here. Um, but you can see what I'm doing here while I'm cranking it um, uh, with my right hand. My left hand is actually lifting up on it because it's really important that you don't create a crease um, along the edge of the spar. So you kind of have these opposing actions going, which is why I've got that glove on because it really does start to hurt your hand uh, after a little while. Um, but it takes a lot of work, um, a lot of effort to, um, get that cranked over. Um, so it's really sort of hours doing this same kind of motion over and over again. And it takes a lot of work to sort of finesse it into the final shape that you need. Um, having two extra hands would be 
great in this situation if one person could be torquing from both ends, the other person reaching across the table and lifting up on the piece, uh, that would be a little bit easier. And then it becomes more difficult when you get into the vertical stabilizer because the spar is yet wider still. So getting that piece uh, all cleaned up and ready to rivet together, just some acetone to get the residue from that Gorilla Tape off of there. Um, I don't think we have it here in this video, but obviously before I started doing this, I did some edge finishing um, there. And then once, let's see, all riveted together, or rather all clico together. Um, and during that process, there is some final size drilling that has to happen once you get those two halves made it up. Um, obviously you can't get behind this piece with a bucking bar or a squeezer. So these are all blind rivets, um, fastening it together. So that looks like that's it for the right elevator. And then we'll get into the, uh, vertical stabilizer. And, uh, like I said, a minute ago, the, the spar here is wider, which means that it's more material that you're working over. You see me running down. Uh, this time and final size drilling each of those holes uh, with a block of wood behind uh, behind the hole and then here taking the file and just cleaning up those edges doing the same thing on the opposite side and then deburring it um, this one's pretty tough if you look at how wide the that gap is at the foot of the um, vertical stabilizer and that doesn't seem like it's a lot of material to pull over and get an overlap um, <laughs> to I think the, the overlaps uh, I don't know I didn't measure it. it's probably about a half an inch uh, in order to get those holes lined up starting with the easy end the smaller material is easier ah that's really important right there um, breaking the edge uh, using an edge forming tool and it just puts a very slight break on the that outer or overlapping edge so that when the two pieces are made it up it's not lifting away from the other and it creates a really nice edge uh, it's a really important tool for things like this just to get a, a nice finish on it so uh, anyways like I was saying the 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 smaller the material, the easier this is, and it's confidence building. And as you work your way down towards the larger portions, it becomes much more difficult. And you wonder why you were so confident in the first place. Uh, and another challenging thing is you, once you get one half of um, either the left or right, top or bottom, whatever you want to call it, once you get one half of it rolled, you think that you're doing pretty well, but then trying to work on... Um, rolling the mating surface with the other piece hanging over that gets a little bit challenging and you're going to wish you had some leather work gloves to get in there and uh, wrestle that stuff around so I went through a lot of PVC and a lot of Gorilla Tape but uh, the end result was satisfactory I think um, I think I ran out of battery before this is done but you'll see here that they were actually all finished so thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.